What's going on? This is me again. Today we're doing encryption or crypto 101. This room is kind of sister to uh, the hashing crypto 101. So if you haven't done hashing 101, you can go back and do hashing and then come back again and do encryption. So in this room, we're going to cover basics of encryption. Uh, I'm interested in showing you the answers to the questions. You can read the you can read up the tasks alone if you want. Uh, and um, I will show the answer to the questions and explain how we got the answer. So basically we start over with task two, key terms. Okay, so here we have got two questions. The first one, are SSH keys protected with a passphrase or a password? So basically an SSH key is protected with a passphrase, not a password. Uh, as you can see here, the passphrase is separate to the key, but password is similar to the password but used to protect the key. So normally in, in cryptography, we use passphrases to protect encryption keys. And in the case of SSH, we use the passphrase to encrypt the private key that we generate with SSH key gen. Why is encryption important? Here we got three questions. The first one, what does SSH stand for? Secure shell. How do web servers pro prove their identity? You know, we use public certificates. So as you can see right now, we are at the Try Hack Me page. If you click on the padlock here, you will see uh, the information about the certificate. And the pop-up is saying that the connection is secure because it's using HTTPS. So how do web servers prove their identity? They use certificates. What is the main set of standards you need to comply with if you store or process payment card details? So PCI DSS is Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. That is kind of regulation and a standard for everyone or every company, every entity which deals with uh, financial information such as a credit card, bank statements, customer information. Here you can read more about PCI DSS and get an idea about what are the uh, businesses that or to whom the standard applies to and how to get uh, complied uh, with the how to co comply with the uh, standard as well. Task four, crucial type crypto mass. So here we um, scratch the surface about the math of cryptography so basically most cryptography or many cryptographic uh, libraries and modules use the remainder function with the remainder uh, mathematic operator so here an example would be what is 30 30 remainder over 5 so basically here uh, if the division or if the there is no remainder it means I'm um, sorry if the division here for example, here 30 over 5, the division is equal to 6, so there is no remainder. So we say the remainder is 0. Here we have 25 over 7, uh, the remainder is 4. The reason for that is when you divide 25 over 7, you get um, 3, right? And you will have then remainder. So 3 minus 7 equal 4, the remainder is 4. What is... We see we have big number here and we are required to find the remainder on 1991. So basically you can use Python to accomplish the purpose. What we can do here, we can just type A equal, copy the number. B equal and 1991. And say we divide or we say C equal A remainder B and then print C, we get the value of the remainder. So it is 3565. Task 5, types of encryption. So should we trust DES? DES is, um, you know, it's kind of symmetric encryption. It uses 56 bits long key, so it is not... Um, reliable. The second question is what was the result of the attempt to make DES more secure so that it could be used for longer? So we have a standard called, if you google it, triple DES. Triple DES is an improved version of DES. It uses longer 
in, uh, key size as you can see the key size here uh, 56 but in triple DS they use as you can see 168 bits so it's an improved version of DS is it okay to share your public key of course yes the public key is used uh, to you know in asymmetric encryption you have two keys the public key and the private key so you exchange the public key with the uh, receiver or the sender of information in order to uh, establish a line of trust between you and the other party and so that's that's why it's okay to share your public key with other the other end uh, so when you send them your um, a private key uh, sorry when you send them the message and the message is encrypted they use a public key to decrypt it RSA algorithm so the questions here we have one P equal four three nine one Q equal sixty six five nine. So, what is N? So if you Google it or if you look at the explanation here, we have something called the key variables in RSA. We have P, Q, M, N, E, D, and C. All these variables are used to represent some kind of representation for the message, the ciphertext, the public key. For example, the public key is represented by N. The public key, uh, yes, so public key is N and E. Private key is N and D. Uh, so how do you find the product of P and Q? The product of P and Q is equal to N. So if you want to find N, you multiply Q and P. You can accomplish that with Python as well. As you can see, I have it here accomplished. Let me do some. Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, so I put P equal uh, 4391, Q equals 6659, and then the product of P and the Q is N, print N, you get the answer. Establishing keys using asymmetric cryptography. So here are no questions. Uh, here we get uh, another question. What company is TriHack MIS certificate issued to? So here, what is the company that has issued the certificate to try hack me? If you remember, when we look at the padlock and you click on certificate, you have the pop-up here uh, stating the name of the company that has issued the certificate to try hack me. In this case, it is Cloudflare. SSH authentication here, you ha we have some tasks. Uh, download the task files and then proceed to the questions so basically we've got um, uh, here private key SSH private key we require to find the passphrase used to encrypt that private key so here is the question so what we do first let's go back to my machine and all right so here I got a file the RSA file so here we got the RSA file or the private key file. We would like to find the password for this file. So we use a tool called um, SSH to John.py to convert the private key into a hash. Okay. And then once we have the hash here, we use John the Ripper to crack the hash using the word list rocky.txt and then the password is delicious so this is the passphrase or the password used to encrypt the ssh private key here what algorithm does the key use it's rsa rsa is the algorithm used to uh, create the private keys in ssh authentication explaining diffie hellman key exchange no answers are needed so then we proceed to pgp pgp uh, gpg uh, they are standards and we have a software called GNPG to encrypt and decrypt files using uh, private keys. So basically, in this challenge, you download the task files and you're required, or in this task file, you're given a private key, okay? And also you're given an encrypted file. You're required to find the secret word. So if you go to the, my machine here, check on the files. So. At first, you have message, encrypted message, with the extension GPG. And you have 
the private key. So you have to apply the uh, concepts of GPG or you have to use GPG to just decrypt the message, right? Once you have the private key, you can decrypt the uh, file. So what do we do here? I used GPG. Imported the private key. First, you have to import the private key. And then we have we used GPG on the encrypted message. And given that we have imported the private key, the tool can just apply the decryption process using the private key on the encrypted message. And the encrypted message will be decrypted. The file or the resultant file name is message. Once you cat the message, you find the answer or the secret word is pineapple. So easy enough. This room was very easy. Uh, just wanted to show you the answers and how I found the answers. In the next video, we're going to do some uh, challenges. I'm thinking of doing Sweet Tooth. This is my, will be my next uh, walkthrough for Try Hack Me. So, thank you for watching.